Hi there guys, Louis here and welcome back to a brand new video. Now, it's been a couple of weeks, I haven't posted, but you know, I haven't felt creative. I don't know if a lot of you guys are feeling the same sort of way since being in lockdown. I haven't really left the house much, been working a lot more. I just haven't felt creative, I felt like in a bit of a rut. But we're back today, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling refreshed today. And we're back today with a new project and uh, hopefully something you guys can watch at home and enjoy. So in today's video, I'm going to be looking at creating some album artwork and maybe like a little logo graphic as well for a friend of mine. For a friend and a colleague who has started making some beats during lockdown. They're actually pretty good, so you better go check them out. I'll make sure I link it during the video. If you guys have been enjoying the content uh, and you're not already subscribed, then make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. It really does help, shows your support, and helps grow the channel. We're almost at 10K, we're actually smashing it, which was just a bit of a milestone, really, a little bit of a goal for this year. So if we can do that, that'd be sick. So yeah, cheers. But yeah, let's get started. So we're gonna start off by checking out the actual music, seeing how it sounds, seeing how it feels, and see if we can draw some inspiration for that. After all, we are creating it for this, so we need to draw inspiration from the actual track. What I'm gonna do it for is mainly just for the whole selection of songs that he's made. Specifically, I'll be taking inspiration from his latest one, which is called Babylon. So uh, we can give that a little play. <laughs> It's actually a banger, I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, that's enough of that. It's um, sort of like tech house, I guess. Quite deep, quite dancey, so we can be quite creative with it. Now, when it comes to creating the album cover, I've already got some sort of inspiration, some sort of idea, but with the dance music and this sort of music, it's a lot more about interpretation and emotion and feelings. Rather than like, you know, hip hop or anything like that, it's normally about storytelling or, you know, it will feature a picture of a person because it's about them, it's about their stories and things like that. So for this, I think I can get quite creative, maybe use some nice textures in there and some nice bold abstract imagery to, uh, really just make like something that's a bit weird and wonderful really. First of all, I'm gonna go and look for some inspiration, look at some other artists and things that I like. But yeah, one of the styles I'm really liking at the moment or like a type style that I think is really interesting and would be good for this is this sort of like weird techie style typefaces. They're very Blade Runner, they're very dystopian and weird. But I really like this style. There's a lot of them, I'm just looking here on Pinterest, a lot of this sort of style, really blocky and bold. And I think it fits in really well. So I'm definitely gonna draw some inspiration from this sort of thing. And the main thing that I've been thinking of, the main source of inspiration, inspiration is Aphex Twin. I don't know if any of you guys have heard of him, but his logo is very, very cool. Very bold, weird sort of use of type. But it's these cool kind of graphics made out of these weird typefaces, which is really nice. And I think that is something that I'm going to take some inspiration from in terms of the logo lockup. Another really good inspiration is I always remember the Flume album covers. They're really bold, really colourful. They're really cool. I think I kind of want to go for a black and white design because that's just my style. I kind of like doing stuff like that. But I really like these bold, weird, colourful flower graphics. So what I might do is try to take like a colourful abstract graphic and maybe make it black and white. Again, like just this use of like one singular image, I think is really really cool. So in terms of fonts, like I've been already having a little look, but uh, I've got a little secret for you guys. Like where I find the best fonts that I think are really original, they're kind of like display fonts, so they kind of stand out on their own. They wouldn't be good for big paragraphs of text. But making little graphics and logos, I always go on Behance and type in free fonts. I mean, a lot of these are free, but some of them they require you buying them or whatever, but I think it's worth it. So if you see one you like, it's always worth investing in a good font, especially if it's from a small independent like type designer. Good to support those and um, good to get something that's really original. Whenever I'm coming in a Approaching a little logo like this, especially when it's a little bit more abstract, not so much your conventional logo. This is going to be something that's a bit more of a graphic. It's going to be quite cool, edgy, and weird. So as you can see on here, a lot of these are like free, as in like you can free to try them out, and then you pay for the license, which is cool. So here's one. Usually, that's quite cool. Check this one out. As you can see, they've got quite nice shapes on there. I don't think it's quite right actually. Now I'm looking at it, but again, you can imagine some really nice graphic made out of this. This one's really cool. Dead author. Let's have a little look at that one. Yeah, that's cool. That's really nice. So you can see it's kind of techy kind of cyber sort of feels going on there and like look, they've already done it in that sort of style where they've got like a side panel looks really nice it's really bold but yeah i'm gonna keep looking and see what else i can find now this typeface ornamentum this is sick this is such a nice typeface really techy really cool really interesting like all the characters are really interesting on their own so as you can imagine if you put this together you could create something like really unique looking maybe a bit abstract might take like a second glance for you to sort of understand what it's saying but i think for this it's absolutely perfect we want something that's a little bit sort of electronic absolutely love this i'm gonna download this one and uh, then I'm going to play with it and get something nice out of this. So we're going to start by creating our logo. We found our font that we really like and uh, this is going to be like a logo as well as like the type on the side of the artwork I think. But I'm going to use that typeface that we just found like so. 
idea I'm having, I want these to be quite connected. I want these to be a lot closer together. But I also think at the moment they're quite sharp. I want these to be a bit more rounded, a bit more fluid. So I'm gonna go ahead and round these off. But first of all, I'm gonna get my composition and the layout sort of right. So I'm actually gonna do this by hand individually rather than just sorting it out. Kind of want them all to link. So some of these shapes are not going to really work touching. I think the O's here, they need to kind of be on their own, but I think everything kind of intertwines a lot. This sort of connects by the lining over here. And like with the E here, I wanted to extend it a little bit. So it extended past this point. And I think I'm going to do the same here with the O, maybe extending it down there. So it kind of fits together, even if like a couple of these are not actually touching because they don't really work. As long as they're sort of going into the other shape space, then it kind of feels a bit more that they are all sort of one. All right, so that's where we're at the moment. Really great typeface. Um, shout out to Hugo who created this. And it looks fantastic on its own, but I wanna make this a little bit more rounded. I don't want it to be as sort of sharp and aggressive. I kinda of want it to be a bit more fluid, like some of the inspiration we'll look at earlier, like the Apex Twin. It's sort of all molding together a little bit, and I think that looks really cool. So I just create a little duplicate up there because I'm scared to make mistakes, but it's fine. We all make mistakes. So I'm gonna use my Pathfinder tool merge this all together so it's one shape and then what i can do is just click on here get my white arrow and start curving the points of each shape so you see how this shape here is already starting to sort of mold round a bit it's a bit more fluid and round rather than sharp and aggressive which is good and i'm going to just do this on each and every shape and uh, this is where we're at the moment it looks really cool i'm really happy with this i'm really liking as you can see the difference between this and this it's a little bit abstract, it looks a little bit weird, it's almost like alien, like what you imagine alien writing to be, like some future tech thing. But that's the sort of vibe we're going with. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create two variations for this. I'm gonna have one solid and one outline variation. So again, just take that and copy it over to the side. And I'm gonna highlight this and go to object, shape or path actually, and uh, offset path. So this is gonna create a little border. I think we're gonna do it as five and we can make that a little color just so we can see. So this is our shape. I can also then get the yellow, select, select, same fill color, select all of those. And then I can press this little Pathfinder tool which will merge that all into one shape. Uh, then what I'm gonna do here is just go in and delete any of these spaces. I kind of want it to be one big block. I don't want these little gaps in between. So it actually looks quite nice in yellow and black, but we're only having a black and white version. I'm gonna take it off the artboard so I can see it a little bit better. So imagine this is our fill color. This is our solid version. We're gonna want two different ones. So one's gonna be white like so, and then make the outline the yellow, make that black. And then I'm gonna do an alternate version where the yellow is actually white like so. And then I'm gonna do another version where I take this down and the black, we're gonna get rid of the fill and then just add a white stroke. Like so, so there are three graphics. I think they're really cool. They're very abstract, they're very weird. Happy with this and uh, wanna take it forward. So now that we're finished with this, we're gonna jump into our album artwork and sort of incorporate this type graphic that we've created here into a uh, nice bold piece of album artwork. I'm gonna start off by creating a black background because I want my album artwork to be black. And then I'm gonna create a border, I think. I might round the corners a little bit more. So I want the text to go down one side and the image to be in the middle, but on the right hand side as well. So I'm going to duplicate that and add a fill. And I think our text should come up to about there. And then I can make this a bit smaller. So I'm just pasting my text in. I want this text to sit on the left hand side, but I kind of want it to overlap the image, if you know what I'm saying. So I kind of want the image to go behind it. So I think we need to make this all a bit smaller, that and that. So this white area is going to be the holding device for our image. And then we've got this border going on around here. But I'm actually going to get this border and maybe fade out one side. So we're going to add a little mask, go to our gradient tool, uh, press X to change that to black. So we're going to be removing parts. And I want to fade it out to black on one side. I kind of want to be in the middle like that. So we'll actually have a bit more trail on it. So you've got the border coming around here and as it goes around that side, it fades out to black, which I think looks pretty cool. So now I need an image to go inside my shape. I'm thinking something quite abstract, something quite, it needs to be quite round. It needs to fit in with the theme of this text. I want it to be kind of bubbly. Maybe we have a look at bubbles or something like that and then kind of manipulate it a little bit. So um, I'm gonna go and find some stock imagery on Pexels where you can get some free stock imagery. So this is one that I really like. The shapes are a little bit crazy. There's a lot going on. It's very bright. Like I said, I'm gonna make this probably just black and white, but I love the shapes. They kind of fit in, they're all kind of fitting together and it's similar to our typeface. So I think this would be a really good image to use next to it. Um, Fiona Art, she's got a little YouTube plaque there, so she might do YouTube. So 
Shout out Fiona Art, nice one. Thank you for the use of your imagery. It's very, very nice. So we're back in our Photoshop and I'm just gonna put it over here. And then what I can do is if my image is above, I can actually just create a clipping mask. And that's gonna clip it to that image there. And I think it looks really cool like that. Clip to that little rounded image, play around with the composition. It'd actually be nice going from not as busy to busy over there, like so. But I am going to ruin it. I'm going to threshold it. Look at that, wow. And I'm gonna play around with the threshold a little bit. I mean, down the line, if we decide we like it without and we want to keep the image, we can do that. But I really want this to be black and white. I'm really liking the black and white aesthetic at the moment. That is crazy. That's a really strong image, I think. Um, if you were to see that, you wouldn't even know what it is first glance. It's a little bit you know, overwhelming, but there's lots of bubble round textures going on there. And it's really cool. It almost looks like a snake skin as well. So at the moment, there's a couple of areas here that are looking a little bit bare. So I think for this, I might even have to make this a little bit bigger, you know. I want it to align with the top of the image like that and that. And because we haven't got the border on this side, it's going to look a little bit weird. So we might have to add something else in that side. But it's looking really good. So I think what we're going to do is going to add some details in here. I kind of think like maybe a little arrow would be nice in there. And then maybe, I don't know, like a little, some little graphics down here, like a little globe or something. Something cool, some weird little edgy graphics that um, really add to this. I think there's a lot of big bold stuff at the moment. You kind of need a couple of little small details to break up the space. So I think I'm gonna start off by adding in just a little bit of text at the top left. I want it to align there. Everything else is a little bit intense. So I think the text little details here need to be quite minimal. If you just go for a Helvetica, to be honest, it's always good to stay simple. But I think it needs to be quite light. What I might do is just put that on one line, 2020 EP. Cool little detail there. Um, what I might do is I feel like this space here could be quite cool if we add in a little arrow. So I might, I'm gonna make that the illustrator actually. Extend that, like so. And then just have this in as another little detail in there. Like so, I think that looks sick. Just a little detail there to break up the space. I kind of like all the shapes kind of merging together and everything's kind of fitting together. Again, like this image, like the text here, all the shapes are kind of fitting in together, which is, is really cool. And now I need to think of something cool to fit down here. So I'm gonna create another rounded rectangle. He's the same as last time, that's five pixels. And I wanna create it so it fits in this space here, just like so. I think in here what we can do is add in like a nice little graphic, like a little globe or something that's just quite interesting. So I think I'm gonna grab like a little globe because he's trying to make it worldwide, you know? So um, we need to show the support on the cover. And what we can do is just create a duplicate like so. And then if I line that up to that one there, then you can get all three of these and in your line section, you can distribute evenly like so. So that's gonna create an even space between all of them. And then I can go ahead and align that to the middle. I might actually have them fading in. So this one's on what, 30, this one is on. 60, it kind of fades in at the bottom there. As artwork goes, I'm pretty happy with this. It's pretty abstract. Again, everything kind of fits together. I've taken themes from the image as well and the text and sort of made everything fit together pretty well. Added in some little cool little details here and there. This is pretty cool. I'm really liking it. I might add some textures and stuff, but I'm gonna do that at the next stage. So I'm gonna save this and then open my mock-up and uh, start mocking this up as a real CD cover. So for today's artwork, I'm gonna find a nice CD mock-up. I like the look of this one. I like this one because it's got a few different ranges of the things that we can mock up. So I've got the front cover there and I've got the inside with the CD, which I think would be pretty cool. So I might do one of each and maybe even just a CD on its own, have it spinning, something like that, really cool. Anyway, I just wanna give a big shout out to today's sponsor. Yes, Invato Elements has sponsored today's video legends so they do it on a subscription basis which i think is really good which means you can get as much as you want per month i use mock-ups and brushes and textures for every single client work that i do and also my own personal work and freelance work so go check them out good price good deal and uh, great assets so yeah i'll leave a link down below if you want to go check that out and i'll leave a link to this asset as well if you want to download this and use this within your own work thank you and uh back to the video so this is the mock-up that i downloaded all i did was split it into two separate files with a black background just so i had them isolated on their own drag and drop your artwork in there and boom this is the mock-up and look how great that looks this is also the second mock-up this is the interior and this is where we get to see the cd a little bit more uh, which i think looks great And then you can see here the three final logo designs and I sort of made the top one look like a sticker. Uh, but yeah, I'm also really, really happy with this and I think it turned out really well.
But yeah, that's it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed uh, watching along, watching the process, and um, I think it looks really good. I'm really happy with the logo and the artwork, so hopefully you think so too. Let me know down below. Yeah, go check out everything I mentioned today. Go check out Brandon Lee's music. It's getting better and better. And uh, yeah, there's some absolute bangers on there, so go and check those out. And uh, also, yeah, go and check out the Envato Market if you're interested in some assets. Yeah, guys, thank you again for watching, and uh, I'll catch you again soon in the new video. So stay safe, take care, and um, catch you in a bit.